All right, so today's session is called Centering the Bones. So what you want to acquire to begin the setting for your back and your thigh muscles is to get a belt. And I want you to have your, um, your sandbag nearby. So if you happen to have a sandbag, place it near your legs. And if you have two, you can use one of those bags on your feet and then one on your ribs, or you could use the bags on your legs to stretch out your thighs. So kind of take a little um, inventory about where you could use that release of the bone so that we can kind of let gravity flow through the muscles. So I take the belt, I better buckle up, I'm going to move it overhead, around back, a little spine. And since the belt doesn't have much to do with my spine focus, what you're going to do is place the belt over the tops of your feet. And as you lower back and the hips are, they're kind of squished in this pose, right? It's, it's not that we're trying to fan them across with the leg stretch. It's like they're, they're drawing in and centering the bones. So back to that idea of centering the bones. So I push with my feet forward. I try to push firm to center the hip bone, center the pelvis. And I want the belt so it's fairly low. It's almost at the gluteal fold. So it's like a very low belt. And then as I direct my circulation back, if you have a ball, I want you to keep that by the side. If you don't, we'll have a similar exercise, no big deal. And we'll take the sand either on your feet or up across the ribs. And as I align the blocks, I have them tipped. Just tipped a little bit. Now, since the practice is about centering your bones, since we have two sides, and two sides to the um, muscles and how they work at the speed of the practice, Try to let the muscles slow down. And then as I center my sandbag, door number one is the arms resting out and shoulders centering and feeling them try to actually push back into the bolster. And door number two in the beginning would be to grasp the hold of that ball and you'll hold on to the corners, right? Feeling the contour of the ball the circular pattern, there's no corners, it's a circle, and we'll reach the arms both back. So you decide if you want your arms to be in a complete centering position, open and relaxed. And if you prefer to actually move your arms with the hold of the ball reaching back overhead and centering towards the ceiling. Okay, so give yourself a few moments with that. You can alternate the motion of the ball or keep the position of the sand centering on the rib cage. Okay, now feeling where the awareness is kind of consistent in the core of the body and start to center the core around the bones, right? Noticing all the pieces of you. But in this position, with all of us, arms are resting to the ground. Feel the position of the alignment of your bones. And if you have that sand sack on the ribs, that's an alert for your lung force, right? It's a weight for your lungs to resist. So feel if you can incorporate inhaling very slow. And then with that high density, draw in, exhale, lengthy exhale as you empty your lungs. And allow the situation to center your mind as much as your bones and the core of your bones for another couple minutes. So 
we're in a simple Supta Baddha Konasana. If you need to move your arms around and have some quirky motions with your upper limbs, that's always okay. But notice if you can let the body stop fidgeting for a few and feeling how do you center your bones. Part of it's acceptance. Part of it's getting away from the fidgeting and just simply feeling the fullness of your breath and your bones centered on the props. Inhaling for a count of four, fill it up, empty out for a count of five. Relax your fingers and feel the pressure of the shoulders back, the blades and towards the bolster. And then of course, you might decide to kind of hollow out and let go of that intensity. And see if you can live somewhere in between stillness and that vibrancy from trying to interact with your structure and open it up. And now as we move our arms above the floor so they hover and feel from that hovering that we reach our hands towards the ceiling and interlace your fingers and press the palms up. Feeling through the wrists, feeling through the actual hand. And as the hands move back, we're going to extend the arms and the layer of the chest and possibly getting long in your side body. Try to feel the breath in the side body. So feel the belly move with the course of your breathing. So now we're going into that second phase of the entry pose. So as I move my elbows open, you might do some dynamic motions, right? Like you're extending your arms out, making some circular pattern, but you might like the global go wide with the arms and feel the rib cage. And then it's nice to settle down with the hands and the sandbag to the floor. And then as I unbuckle, I'm going to move my knees to draw up and towards each other. So I'm in a bit of a teepee pose. So the knees rest in together. My feet scoot out to the edges of my mat. And if your feet are in a parallel zone of the bones, we're trying to connect to the core of the bone. So I want you to let your feet turn in. And then obviously the knee um, is in that fashion of internal, right? So as I move a ball or a block next to my left hip, either object is fine, next to your left hip. And you're gonna first start with placing that object next to the hip and then feeling the rib cage lengthen like you're drawing the oxygen in. So the belly is drawing up on the inhale. Filling it up and on the exhale, drawing it down towards the back body. Try to keep a regulated rhythm of breath, segmented breathing. And then we'll move the left foot so it's parallel and then lift the right foot up and cross it to the left knee and then tilt your leg into that ball or block. And you might have to be a little clever about the positioning. It's, it's a little individual where the layer of the leg can center and you trust this right hip on this right side is starting to get a fuller stretch, right? And knee has to get held on to the whole stretch. So my left hand holds the right knee. And I'm actually trying to pull my knee towards me. So starting to feel the sensation throughout the right hip. 
maybe in the buttock and maybe like three quarters of the buttock that you feel. And noticing now, kind of as we center on the, the bone complex in the pelvis and then in the hip, you don't feel very hipless right now, kind of hip full. So welcome that intensity and let the right arm either rest or stretch back the sides you have. So you have a choice with the arm. Feeling that experience of receiving. And then when you're ready to let go of the knee, let go of it or keep it. It's yours to keep, it's yours to let go. And as I let go of my knee, I'm going to shift my knee center and windshield wipe. So I'm cross. Knees are going to squish side to side. You'll slide a little bit off your bolster, likely. And there's always an opportunity to scoot back. But for right now, let the body get a little floppy. Let the arms stay justified with holding your upper body center. And then as I move into that right, uh, foot centering down, I'm going to scooch back a little bit to my bolster, and then left foot crosses up to the right knee, the left ankle, and then I put the ball or the block next to my right hip, and I let the legs in their shape lean over and hold onto the left knee with the right hand. Yeah, start with being curious which we all usually are with positioning in these shapes. How can I release this holding pattern in my hip? I didn't know it was there, or maybe that's part of why other areas seize up. Even an area upper body can be seizing up because of the lower body. So I bring the left arm so it's besides my head, or I let the arm rest besides my mat. So feeling where that upper left side feels kind of the ridges of the ribs moving with the breath and feeling the belly certainly expand and relax. Okay, you need both of those belly directions to massage the organs and really changing the way Kind of gravity flows through the organs from our natural um, daily habit of standing, right? It's just our way, but it does pull the organs in that same direction. So we're trying to soothe them through the practice sequencing. So let go of the knee when you feel like you can release that. And now we're going to shift entirely over. So I want you to uncross and then start to make your way into a side stitch. So let's get a feel here. If we move into this position with our waist, that will take our bolster. And let's move our blanket so that they're in a pretty good stack. Okay, so they're in an even bulky stack about the height of your bolster. Yeah, and if you feel on your direction into leaning into the shape that the waist, we're now cruising through the, the fine lines of the core of the body. So you can have a block or a ball on the inside of that right leg, and certainly a sandbag would be appropriate. And I find the hip is a good spot if you're in a solo yoga venture with getting your props on, having a hip sandbag seems realistic. And then if I lean my weight to my left side, feeling how that presses into that set of organs on the left side, into the spleen. And then as your right arm is reaching, get a feel if you would like a block overhead underneath the hand. If you decide to stretch the chest open or explore movement with the shoulder joints, right? a block can be quite handy, literally in this position, for the shoulder. 
And so if the shoulder feels like it could use a little bit more support, add on a block. And feeling where the, the ritual of coming into side stage is to work on creating some spaciousness in what's open to the ceiling. So you might explore not just the right side beam, right, the whole rib structure, but also feeling the obliques, the side of the abdominal wall, and feeling if you can roll back a little bit on your head, just a little bit. And then as the breath builds the focus, you want your body to sense that it's grounded and to use the breath as a stretching tool here. So I like to encourage the breathing to support your body in its, maybe the stretching isn't the word I'm really seeking in this class experience, but spaciousness inside. So incorporating the breath phase, which is throughout the practice, to influence where the body's opening up. And give it a few moments here. Feel where the brain is the most comfortable so you can relax your eyes and relax the mind. Now, for me, I have to kind of let my head burrow into the blankets a little bit and then I feel my neck relax. So there's, there's sometimes a lingering decision that you need to make perhaps to let go, something you're kind of clinging into. And the upper arm could always flow down to where it's very comfortable, maybe close to the bolster. And deciding for a few more moments, do you want to stay with this shape, side sage, or do you want to add on a sleeping sage for about a half a minute? So if you want to add that sleeping sage, feel your body come up for a moment and turn the bolster so that it's pivoting and it's up on all that height. So I'm going to turn and let my head still turn to the right side, left side of my head down, but it feels a little different in my neck. Right, then if I have my left arm underneath me cross you. So this is an option. You might leave your sand just where it is or take it off and feel that circulation kind of discovery for your organs, right? Remembering that they have that constant pull with gravity, but now we're influencing their direction. So relaxing the breath and stimulating the core organs, toning the organs, kind of waking up the middle path of the body. So I think the sleeping sage is a good addition, but if you're still on side sage, so be it. So sage the way you want to sage. Side or sleeping sagers. So a few more comforting moments, either in the side or twisting, prone position. You know, feeling and directing your awareness in this right side beam. Okay. If you're Moving your leg back so that the, the ball or the block is not part of it, that's fine. You can also keep it there. You might even be tempted to kind of get rid of the ball and see what happens with the thigh. It'll go away. It's not going away. Okay, so feel the right leg stretch back. It's attack, attacking you. Okay, now this right wave is going to be the base of your entire spine and structure. So in the next few moments of flowing breath, feel the right knee draw closer to the left, and then hands pressing, and then shin relaxing, and coming up to almost sitting, okay, almost sitting. So as we rise up, 
to sitting. We're going to move our bolster to the front. Okay. So let's play a little bit with um, the core process of back and um, into the into the legs. So I'm going to move both blankets so they're stacked up. I'm going to take the sand aside, and we'll give two options on this this boat off, boat pose option. So not normally one is sand across your feet. You might try them all. Sand across the feet. And then as I move my waist back, I'm going to either hold a ball or a block, either spine. I'll hold a block, maybe more of us have these. Okay. So ball or block. And then as I lean back, there's a benefit to either of these objects. I'm not sitting out of the blankets or so leaning back. I'm stimulating the force in the core of the body. And my neck has a little flexion, so I'm going to try to lean down there, push into the object in front of you, lift up the heart, and move forward. Okay. Try to stay grounded into the feet, making those footprints. And as you lean back, keep it very simple. You're going to place the block between the knees so it's narrow. Lean back, squeeze the block. Lift up the heart and move yourself to sit. And as you lean back one last time, squeeze the ball or the block. Bring your hands to the back of the thigh so you have a grip with both hands scooping up the flesh of the thighs. Lift up the chest. Intensity and feel that squeezing of the legs in. And now, when you move up to sitting, so an upright, not too uptight, but upright, hold very, very intensely in the back of the legs. See if you can really pull the back, scoop up the flesh of the thighs. And then feel when your hands let go. How you can squeeze into the block or the ball. Really squeeze into that and maybe close your eyes from top to bottom and feel. Feel the impact in the thigh circulation. And then move your hands to the floor. And now what we'll do is we're going to set ourselves back on top of the blanket. So make sure the bolster is nearby. I'm going to go back to the block, and then as I come back and sit up, I'm taking a few moments to kind of center in the bones and the legs. So just the idea of squeezing the ball or the block, and keep that for about another 30 seconds. So you're squeezing in, and then you're trying to find awareness of your sitting bones. You might pull the flesh out from the sitting bones so you feel that you're as upright, and you have that arch to the spine, your natural arch. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll break the pose. So we'll put a block on the right and your other block over there too. And then placing your left foot in towards the blankets and the right leg stretches out over to the right between the blocks. Okay. So taking the bolster, placing it on top of the block. So my blocks are the mid height. This seems to be clearance for the leg. Um, if you want to go a little bit higher, if the reach is challenging, you can add a little bit more height, go to the next setting. And then placing your sand on the left side and reaching open with the arm. So you're going to turn towards your left, feel the approach of the ribs wide, and then reach the right elbow to the bolster. Tip down, hopefully you found something cushioning, and then let your head rest into your hand. Okay, left arm has no idea what it's supposed to do at this point. So it waits for directions, but you might let the arm relax back and feel your hand or your knuckles at the back. But you might stretch the left side of the rib cage by placing your left hand in kind of the pocket of the waist that's below the, the thickest of the ribs, right where there's a nice kind of swath of flesh that loves to get stretched. So you might work your way of turning your waist towards the bolster and turning back 
open, turning and open. And then get a feel here when you're open that the left arm is behind you or it's going to activate over the side of your face. So you don't have to hold your head. If you don't like this version, you could lower the arm down onto the bolster and stay with a little more active neck position. There's some benefits to that. I mean, to giving some strength in your upper back. So I like to offer both, like feel the support from the crop and the support from my arm muscles, and then working on that centering in the bones here. So notice what's the most helpful, the less hurtful. The left arm stretches open, wide through the shoulder, Okay, and as I come up to sitting upright, right hand to left knee, and I'm gonna lift up my knee. So I actually get a feeling when I lift my knee up that I can make a little deeper of a twist, right? So if my knee is down, this tends to be the, ten the, the tendency here is knee down and then waist collapse. So feel what works for you. If this hand to knee doesn't work and you want your hand higher up on the thigh, that's great. But as you turn to the left, your fingers open, finger pads on the floor, flex the right foot, rotate, breathe. Be a little curious about your neck, right? It might be most responsible for some of us to Keep the brain centered in a little bit of that turn. And for some, we're going to tip our left ear to the shoulder and stretch the right side of the neck. Maybe the left hand comes back a little farther. And you get the feel of the right side of the neck. And then bring your head back center. Okay, as you let go of your knee, we're going to turn forward and try to keep the body of the neck solid here. So I'll move my bolster forward and up. And as I tip, tip into bolster myself, I feel the arch of the spine, but not too much. Right? It's, it's just the right amount. So when you lean into it, be a little curious about manifesting a forward bend that is truly calming. So for some of us, the arms are going to keep reaching and fanning the lips. For some, we'll go bol uh, bolster the forehead. I find that very calming to do this one. Anything that like, lets a little bit of weight on this frontalis uh, muscle at the forehead, right below the hairline, Right, it tends to generate calm in the mind, having that pressure there. So you might work with that. You might have to bring your bolster in, you might have to move a little part forward, and it might not work for you. This might be the better option for your neck. So it's about how it feels for you. So those options are here. And if I'm reaching to the bolster or I change my pose, I can move my brain between the arms and still get that benefit, right? Right, some people will do this pose and still want the benefit for the forehead, but not to um, tighten in their, um, their upper spine. So you can always try to play with your block height here. So my forehead is on my blocks. Just have to be sensitive to if you need all these props or you're free to give them what you've got. Bolster and all. Bolster and all. All right, so another few moments with the reach. Feel the ribs moving back. And then when they move back, you're stretching the back space and then we'll lower the bolster down, let it flop down and then place the right foot either on top of the bolster. You have some choices here. So when my foot is on top, 
I'm going to work my way towards leaning forward for the benefit of this right hip. So if I have one sand, I'll put it over on the right upper thigh, and then use the influence of my blocks under my hands to help propel me forwards and inwards to that hip again. So it's the same kind of direction that we did on the back with a foot cross on our knee. But noticing that instead of pulling my knee towards me, because that's not realistic here, I'm actually leaning my waist forwards and trying to let that right knee actually lower down. So I'm going to see if I can get my hands a little farther front to influence that. Yeah, if some of your back tissues get a little bit charged from that, then you might back off and feel a little bit more of a natural sitting upright, tilting forward position. I still feel this in my hip, even if I'm not fully lowering down to the bolster. Right, so the choice is to move farther and farther down to the bolster. All right, so here we are with this direction. We feel the right foot flexing. So the toes moving towards the knee. Okay, now with the toe motion, we're gonna move back into pigeon pose. So I want you to move your blocks so they're wide out, but they're easy to approach if you need them. And feel the exchange of your hands back on your blankets. And then lean forward so you've really flushed out into that right thigh and hip. But guess what's next, right? It's a left thigh that's getting the same influence, but it's by moving this leg back. So as I move my chin in and I scoop up through my shoulders and my chest up. Okay, and then let the sand flush off of your right leg and reach the right leg back. And as you're moving into this left knee open, it's kind of a winged position for your hip, isn't it? Your left knee. So try to stay with the energy of your left thigh down. If you don't want to use two blankets, you can leave one out. So if you have an easy time getting in this pose, take a blanket out. If you want to stay with the two, that's great. And then as I lean forward, I'm going to have a couple options here. Door one is here. Door two is you can lower down on the bolster. And door three is my right elbow stays on my bolster or the floor. And I'm going to reach my left arm open and twist. So I'm in that twist again. It's just a different hip that's getting rotated through. So your left arm could reach straight back. And it can also reach around towards your right hip, which is actually going towards your left foot, right? So feeling the upper body twist, right? It's moving to the upper thoracic line. That whole thoracic chamber is located. And work with the right elbow, pressing down. If you are feeling like the bolster is a little, a little too mushy to push into, you've got a mushy bolster. Yeah, then why do you think that even though it's temporary, it would be my block, right? It's just a little more defined in the core of the box. And I give it a few more. I know this is intense for the core body to stay with the support. Breathing only helps. You know, those of us that are twisters, we're going to move out of our twister and then come down. And then as we come back, we're going to move the bolster in, toes under, and then stretch the left foot back and alternate bending your knees. Also, you feel the calves. So see if you can tread a little bit as you pedal out the legs and really get a feel for your head bowing down. Modify as needed, right? If this is not the intention that you want to move forwards right now, you can always go to something a little more gentle. Okay, but as I get a feel for the feet, 
I want you to work your way to alternating for a few more moments. Okay. Okay, now if you have two blankets, you're going to want to remove one of those blankets carefully. You need to come down to your knees, but the blanket would be under your knees that way, huh? Okay, so feel your heels lift. And then as you move towards a upright push up, almost, but not quite ish, left knee on blanket, right foot steps up to the top right corner of your mat and pull in your bolster. So you can actually lower your left thigh on top of it. So center your left thigh from the center of the thigh as if you're trying to give that thigh a little bit of a, a little bit of a massage. Okay, so my arms could be straight-ish. I could put blocks under my elbows. That's quite helpful, I find, on this position. And I'm not as slouchy in my chest, and my wrists are happier. Okay, so it's up to you, but this left leg is probably going to gradually feel it, but I feel quite a bit in this right inner thigh. Okay, so your left hip flexor and your right adductor, making too many twitching moves is not always the most productive in gecko pose. So this is pretty dense connective tissue. So let the waist feel a mild arch. Yeah, deep back bend is not likely that you're going to pursue that. But it, it is enticing, right, to explore this condition. So find simple. Remember, it's a pretty, pretty dead stretch. So feel the fullness of the legs. Now, feeling where your thigh band is tone, right? Feel where there's tone in the right thigh. And then as I move my hands to assist myself to frame back, I'm going to come down with my hands both beside the bolster and lean forward into a version of up dog with a bolster. So arching. Okay, feel the tops of your feet on the floor. Feel the, the bones that actually touch down and whether they're even or not on your feet. Just kind of notice, do your feet have an even pressure? Do your hands have an even pressure? Get even with them. Feel that divine arch through the spine and through the belly, stretching through the hollow of the core here. And now let your toes hook. And then when you come back, try to come back with your head moving down. You reach the hips back. So my brain moves down, so I'm in a version of child's pose. You know, palms are open. And then as you start to move the hip center, neutral spine, stepping the opposite foot up, so your left foot steps, the right thigh, you know, the, the measurement here of the, the hip uh, joints is kind of interesting on, on what feels the denser of the, the stretches, right, left or right. So I think we're probably all a little unique on that perspective, but. Um, most likely you feel something in each leg. Yeah, I hope. So the left inner thigh might feel the most. For me, it's, it's pretty balanced with sensation. But if I have my blocks under my elbows, if I can make it there, if it's too much in your knee joint or just, wow, there's a lot of, a lot of dense stuff in there that needs to get kind of maybe shifted you might have your hands on the blocks and you have to really work your way to feel the top of the back thigh as much on the bolster as you can maneuver it otherwise i get the knee over the toes on the left side so i've got to maneuver this back leg you could always have a blanket on top of your bolster for this second round i remember so if i lean down and then 
the thigh, kind of the top of my right thigh, and the pocket on the side is kind of swerving in. I'm trying to get it so it's an even line in my right thigh, straight down. Right, remember, try to keep it very balancing in your joints. Feeling, breathing through. Now, as we come up, if your elbows are down, start to again make your way up. So, bend lower down, foot steps back, and then we'll come into being on the knees. You want only one blanket under your shins, between your knees. So, if you've got a stack of a couple, remove one and place a wide one between your feet. Okay. So, hands and knees, spine neutral. Alternate arching the spine and rounding the back neck. Feel the chin in and feel where you arch the spine. Now keep in mind these are two different poses, right? We tend to thread them together, which can lose some of the, the focus within each. So I want you to notice when you scoop up your core and hollow the core and lower your head downwards. You now feel the chin scooping in. Feel your fingers open out. And then as you start to work through that arching pattern, feel the arch, feel the ribs. Okay, so notice this. Okay, now when we shift our hips back, and we bring ourselves up to stand on the knees. Okay, that arch is going to get fuller. Okay, so I've got the position where I'm pressing into my block with my ankles. And then I have my hands on my thighs and I'm stretching my thighs. So this is incorporating two of the shapes we just worked on the lunging and also the up dog, right? The arching as well. So when you lean back, feeling the load in the lumbars, they're pretty loaded. Right? They're, the, the thickness of this part of the rib cage as well is getting a little more load. So door one is here. I don't have to do any more motion with my head except for my neck flexion. It's starting to get a little worrisome, right? I try to tend to push my chin down. So see if you can trust lifting your head, okay? And if you're going to move a little further, you can bring your hands to the small of your back, right above the glutes, right above the buttocks. Okay, chest open. Stretch the chest as much as you're stretching your spine. Right, it's more of that spinal extension. Okay. And those that want to go a little further, hands go down. Careful to the, the back of the thighs. Reaching the hands wide on the thighs. And now as you start to move your hands up to the small of the back, and feel the feet push into the block, and then come up to what you think is neutral for your hips. So you're in more of a kneeling tadasana. I'm squeezing into the block, and my thigh muscles are not so sure if they should squeeze or just stay, stay steady. So as I start to lean at my hips and hinge at the hips, be very mindful of your lower back, like there's space, you've got like a, a brace across the back that's creating space. And then when you lower down, kind of humble it into this shape, hands and knees, you're gonna tuck the toes under, and I would move the block, it's a little bit of distraction on that one. Lift up your knees and Work your way toward the downward dog with either the bolster under your head or push it away, you choose. And let the arms truly reach and feeling your spine spill out of the back of the pelvis. So the hips are up and back and the spine spilling down. Nod your head. Let your head relax. Yeah, feel the skin cells of the face starting to certainly receive 
that influence of blood and circulation. You know, we're down through the knees and start to take your way towards side stage uh, with that second side. So here's the, the difference now. So we like to use the blankets. So we're gonna have to switch them around. So I'm gonna have you take the blanket so you cross them to the other side. You move your bolster to its horizontal frame. And then when I lean into this in that right hip, right, I switch the side around. Now you might want to get your blankets just like good, especially if they're kind of folded awkwardly under. Okay, this will be a good setup for your seated poses on the second side. So when you lean into this right arm, <clears throat> keep in mind the block or the ball on the inside of the left leg. And, and we place our sand on the left hip and we lean into. Right. We notice that the core of the bones, that we're still working on basically fine tuning the ribs. Yeah, so you might be kind of a connoisseur of your breathing in this shape, especially the postal breathing. So block could be overhead. Yeah, the neck is fundamentally in the very safe spatial alignment. So make it so for you. And yeah, make this a good one. Make the, the legs be in a folding position, right? The right knee is bending, left knee is bending, but they're in opposite reaches, like they're leaping. Okay, your right leg is in that position, even though you're on your side. Your internal Organs may not know that you're not leaping, right? But they feel the shift. And my left arm could be overhead, it could be opening, it could be either. The eyes closing from top to bottom. Regulate your breathing. Really influencing the length of your breath and the emptiness of the lungs. You know, once you start to feel that you're in a still point, then sometimes the ribs start stretching along. They may not be a place that you feel tightness. If you're breathing well, your lungs are in good operating um, function. They may not ever feel tight, but it's a good idea to keep working through the lungs, the breathing empowerment, because you just never know. So. Whatever we can do to, to oxygenate, to use a little bit more of the, the material that we're given with our breathing force. You know, you can keep it this way or take a sleeping sage pose. That sounds a little bit enticing, huh? Take a sleeping sage. All right, so if you take sleeping sage, notice what happens when you're breathing muscles, right? You go from this type of expan expansion, but you're also twisting, right? To massage the organs. So it's quite nourishing to the organs. So when I twist, it's kind of easy right here. I just turn my bolster. And you could hug your bolster. It might be just perfect for you right there. So hug your bolster, head stays with the turning position. It might feel less pressure. You might not like this bulky Anessa of blankets, you might slide one out. It's up to your left side of your neck right now. But it feels like it's gripping more than remove a blanket if you're in sleeping stage. So experiment for a few more moments here. Feel where the eyes center in moves. 
Yeah, and especially this lower left quadrant of the waist, which you're going to keep your sand on, that's fine. If you decide, ah, I want to remove the sand and, and feel my body twist in, and maybe you move your leg as well. If the ball is kind of on or the block is on, you might be able to get rid of it. But with the twist, with the sensation, breathe easy. Stretching and compressing the torso with the breath, using the breath as a stretching tool. Now continue that dedication to your breath focus, even though we're a little more active here. So when we lower our hands down and we push, then we turn gently towards the floor. Okay, this is as much of a twist and a pressure into my right hip. Okay, so now when you come up, we're going to switch the side around so we just move our balls very towards the leg. Slide your blankets in. So there's a little space behind your blankets. We kind of turn the other direction now. This makes it a little bit more interesting sometimes. So when I come up on top of my blankets to sit, establishing my ground, I'm going to work my right knee to bending. If you happen to um, want to ball under your knee, you can use that or a small object that's cushy, right? You can always put a little bit underneath it. Right. And or not. If it touches down almost, then I would go without. But if it hurts, then you want something under it to help the responsiveness in the knee joint. And then I place my blocks to the left leg, inside, outside, besides the leg. And then as I move my forward, I'm going to position it over to the blocks. And then start right into it. So I'll open out the arms and feel kind of where the shoulders, even if you want to bring your hands to your shoulders and center them down, feel that suggestion of wide. And then when you lean into it, ah, feel where the body is starting to resist. Be curious about it. I like to put my head down to my left hand. The bolster might be set up too distant for your comfort. You might have to adjust to your needs. It seems like something you do often here. And then when my right arm is open, the hand can go back, the arm can go over. Feel where the waist is stretching. If you want to get a little more of that waist and hinge into the right hip, if that's crying out for help. Right? You might slide the sand really high up on that thigh. Right? You really want to almost get that to be a kind of a waist bag. Yeah, we don't want to hang it from our armpit, but you get the idea. So arm gets to go anywhere it wants to be, wherever you're comfortable. Maybe it's open, maybe it's extending overhead. Maybe it's behind your back. Much better. Let the body marinate in the shape for a few moments, maybe closing your eyes. Again, feeling where the center piece of the body is in response. By now, you're still present. Really starting to center on the bones. And just try to get that right shoulder back a tip, just a little bit, just a bit. Turn, turn. Breathe through the nose. If the breath is very resistant, Strengthening the breathing muscles. Try to be with that.
You know, as I move my left hand down, I'm gonna actually come up to a simple twist. So as I bring my right hand back, left hand to right leg, you can hold the knee. You can bring your hand to the thigh. That feels better for me on this side. So it's interesting to feel the differences. If you have two sandbags, you might put one on each thigh here so you really are capable of keeping this left leg down versus popping up. So I feel the twist a little different than when I'm on my belly and turning. Right? It's not as successful. I have to work against gravity this way. So noticing how it will influence you to round your back. See if you can lift up because it just feels better when you do that. Something about it's better. Okay. It may not be obvious for decades, but something about lifting up the heart is better. So feel that efficient motion of the ribs. Nice to have ribs to turn around. And then maybe you tilt your head and stretch your neck. Maybe your left ear moves towards the shoulder. Right? You likely feel it's better going left and right, but we're all different with our neck complex. You might not want to tilt your head. We're feeling a sustained position. Head center and turn forward. Take the bolster on front and up, and let's prepare for this left hip. So we're in a preparation phase here for the final portion, right? So I want you to influence your back in good places. So try to inhabit a good state of reaching through your waist, like the back portion of the waist is not only lifting up on an inhale, but when you lean forwards, you're trying to let the lower back space fan open to you. And now when I lower the bolster and put my foot on it, that lower back space gradually widens, right? Because my foot is up and then the hips broaden. So the pelvi is a little more of a satisfied portion here. So I've got my left leg with the sandbag. If you have two, one on each side. And then let's try this one. Let's take our belt behind us. Hands hold belt. Seems like a realistic direction. And I bring my hands back, palms face forwards. Now, if you decide this isn't good for my neck, it's not helping my shoulders, then feel if you can get your belt a little lower and bring your hands in a little wider than shoulder width. Let's be kind to our shoulder designs. And if you move your arms back, if that's still too much, you can bring the hands up wider. And then as you lean forwards, feel that arch in the spine. It's not my first feeling. Personally, it's my shoulders and my arms. So feel if you can lean forward with the heart. It's a little bit of a droopy heart pose. So a, a chest opener perception is to move my arms back. I'm gonna come back center. Okay, now let go of the belt. Roll your shoulders and try to keep the hands either on the back of the blanket or beyond. Blankets and beyond. Bolsters, blankets, and beyond. Okay. So as I roll back my shoulders, I'm going to try to keep them back. I know it's a tough one. Keep them back. Feel what it's like to be there in your brain. Something about it. Okay. Now we'll lower our hands to the thighs, and we'll actually tilt forward and put our hands on our blocks so they're pretty high up, and lean into it. Feeling the prim and properness of this side. The left hip, inner thigh. All right, really working the core of the bones. And 
Now feeling the replay of your breath. Inhale, slow. Exhale, low. And just knowing that the sequence with the consistent direction of the spine and the upper back really is going to come to a, uh, a little bit more ease when we get to brain flow and some traction poses. So try to do good at staying the course of kind of proper upper back and shoulders response. Just try. And then when I move back, I'm trying to bring my hands to my legs. And when I feel my chin move down, I'm going to try to move the whole course. So press down to your sitting bones, which is challenging here. Lift up at the ribs. Now, if there is a kind of a dissection between the sitting bones and the belly floor, like the floor of the belly and in the ribs, you feel these spots, the sitting bones and the ribs. There's that core that kind of gets a little uncertain. That stretches back and pigeon really nicely. So when we move down, stand off, just kind of notice this mystery, mystery moves, right? Kind of that space where, oh, okay, if I move that way back, right, I get to stretch out that core space. So at least it makes sense sometimes. Now, the two blankets, not for everybody on this one. So you decide. Now, if you want to stay the course of a pretty, Upright pigeon pose, go for it. Might feel good for you. And most of us directing the elbows down is, is wise. So if you're going to stay this course, you want to stay with it for a good 30 seconds before you dive in. Before you dive your pigeon. Left hip flexor is getting a little stretch. So as I move my elbows on down, Here's where we're at. So the elbows can go down or the left elbow on the bolster and I turn. Now this is one last time where some of us may have, I don't know, right? Some of us may have placed our elbow on a block because it's a little more firm than a bolster. I imagine it must be. So my back leg is lengthy. I mean, you could do fancy things and try to put your foot towards your, towards your body. But this left thigh likely is rolling. So try to get on the top of that left thigh and then feel if you can move your right hand around towards your left. Just try, feel the elbows. Both of them are important. Okay, if your neck is getting a little bit quirky with this one, you could keep the twist and turn your gaze down to, your, to the floor, simple. Breathe. Try to keep with these pretzel poses a little bit. Now those with the twisted pigeon, okay, we're gonna move on down with hands and when we switch through to hands and eventually knees, right, I'll start with my palms open and really feel the feature of my hands fly. And as you start to scoot your way back to the table, you're going to likely be moving some blankets around, but don't get too worked up about the blankets. So let's focus on the bolster tucking in. I'm going to keep my blankets up high because this might feel really nice. So when I lower down on my torso, I want you to get a feel for lowering down. Maybe the blankets help you out with this position. And then feel your elbows on the floor and Lift up the right leg, but also lift up your left arm in front. And that arm moves up, the right leg stretches back. Okay, lower down and switch sides. Feel where your neck is lengthening, not pushing up or twisting your neck much. Alternating, lower down that side. And then feeling the tops of the feet on the floor, hands slide back into this modified up dog. Breathe. Okay, toes under, and then make your way into a lunge. So let's take our bolster across. If you don't like getting into a lunge with your bolster, it's a little challenging. You can also keep it right where it's at and step your right foot up and then pivot your bolster so it's horizontal on the mat, right across, okay? 
So we're going to step forward with right foot, place our blocks into our hands, and then lift up the back knee and stretch back into Parsvottanasana. So we're in an extended leg channel. <laughs> it's an extended leg. This is the leg channel now. So extend your legs and try to move your blocks a little farther forwards. Just try, try, try. Now, these all are cumulative, these pose patterns. So feeling the effect here from the right leg for the left. The left thigh is stretching back into the calf, but also I'm trying to move both hips down. Ribs solid in the center. And now bend through your right knee. Really bend so your left calf is feeling this. So feel the bend of that right knee. Feel the left heel try to press to the floor. And then step the left foot up the side to the right. So what's comfortable for you? Maybe it's hips distance apart. Now I'll give a few different standing versions. So one version would be my blocks are forward and tall, and I'm reaching my torso and my brain center, not tipping up or down, keeping a conscious control of my shoulder muscles. Okay. The second option would be to move your blocks out and hold onto your elbows and forward hang. Okay, that's probably a popular one. Okay. The third option would be to reach your hands underneath your feet, right? So you would reach the hands under the feet and actually step onto your hands and stretch out your arms and your legs and try to reach your head down to your leg. Okay, so choose a mindful option that's comfortable enough that you can sustain it for a few more controlled breaths. If you're holding onto your elbows, let your spine spill out of your pelvis. So feel the knees slightly bend. Feel the brain heavy. You can change it into any of these poses you want. But we have three options at least there. Hands under, hands holding, or blocks closed. Stretch the materials of your feet, feel them press. If you're standing on your hands, you're gonna slide your hands out and then we'll all meet with the right leg stretching back and the left leg forward in a first lunge to get into it. And then a leg straight. So try to straighten both of the legs. Try to feel through your calf particles on the back leg. And maneuver here the kind of the, the mass of the, the body. So you're working from core to your levers. So maybe your blocks go forward. Yeah, so your back stretches further. Maybe your blocks go farther down. And noticing the excursion of breath in the upper back. Feel the neck center. Feel the right heel pressing downwards. Remember, you're always welcome to bend your knees a little bit here. But working on a pretty massive um, balance of bones and deep stretch. That's yeah, so everything kind of full focus here. Notice the pieces of your body that you feel right now. And so I kind of notice the, um, just the, the pieces that are feeling rather potent and tense, pull of energy. So I want you to feel that pull of energy when you're in this position and then feel as, as, you, as you, or as you, or as you move your left knee to bending and we're going to lower down into the bolster. So step the right foot forward. Now you might come into what's called Malasana here. So my blocks are front, I'm moving my hips back and so I'm moving into a squat. 
All right, so I've got to use my blocks, moving back, moving back, moving back. And now as I move down, I'm going to move my blocks in and lower. You have to trust that one. And you might find there's other ways to get them besides this idea I have. It's not always the best. So I do what I can. But as my bolster's here, I'm going to move a blanket over to the side. And I'll put my blanket one back farther and then start to lower back. Okay. So as we move on, we lower our back. We feel our knees bending. And I would go for the legs up now. This is a good time after we kind of pull the circulation through the whole tunnel of the legs. So grab your sack. You might put it across your ribs. You might put it across your belly. But as you get the lift of your sand across the soles of the feet. I find this kind of interesting. When I move up with my legs, after I've had a, a, a leg um, pose, standing leg pose, I guess standing pose would be enough to say, you might find that the, the thighs energetically Flush the other direction now. So it's quite stimulating for your immune system, right? Your lymphatic system. So get a feel here for sensation. Maybe your lungs feel it. Maybe your organs feel it different in their directional flow. You have a second sandbag. I put it across your rib or across your belly. But keep in mind you're in. A little challenge there with stand. It's just going to be challenging. And then when you move your arms open, you stretch your hands back. Okay, you could add a belt and hold a belt overhead with your hands. You could stay right here. Sometimes simple is best. So noticing that really what you're letting go of in this position, part of it is fundamentally steady, focus, breathing, elaborating on the breath. And if you kind of wander in the labyrinth of the mind right when you get on your back, that seems to be pretty natural. It's the planning mind position. See if you can get to plant, not planning mind, but planet mind. Calm a bit. Now bending the knees and simply push the sandbag straight up for Bending the knees towards your chest and then push up. We're trying to go vertical with the legs versus kind of swinging them overhead or, or tossing them forward. That happens sometimes we toss the legs a little front. So get a feel of pressing. Yeah, you know, give it a few more moments. Now with the legs pretty full, we're going to move the sand off of the feet. So I encourage you to bend and then if it feels kind of ha happy for you to toss your sand, it just says something good about that. Energetically toss it over here. <clears throat> and then as I bend through the knees, I reach around to find my belt and I'll place it under the right foot and I'm gonna buckle up. So feel where your belt connects and try to go pretty quickly into the variation of one leg stand. Um, as my leg is up, I'm going to loosen up the belt a little bit more than the last pose I had with my belt. So I'll take the belt. It's a long loop. My left thigh stretches down. Now, if I'm going to use sand on my left thigh, I'm probably going to put it on now or after the belt is around my my occiput, okay? 
So you make that decision at this point. If you're going to add your sand, remember it's probably overhead if you can't find it. And then place it to the left side. You don't have to use sand. Okay. And then as I move my belt to my occiput, remember the bump at the back of your head, that's what we're talking about. And for most of us, that's a good starting point, but we tend to find our habits that are more comfortable. So feel where your belt is positioned so that you can kind of hang out here a little bit. Let the neck traction begin. Feel the perspective of your right thigh tone and feel where your right foot is pressing and feel the perspective of kind of zooming in to the sensation of the back sphere of your right knee. If you feel the knee turns out or the knee's flowing in, you might get a touch around your knee. Just notice your wonderful knee that you have and try to influence it so the, the kneecap is it's facing towards you entirely, but also the inside line of the, the right leg is flushing out the limb. So I want to keep it pretty good, pretty stacked. Now I let my arms rest open. Yeah, feel the actual sensation of resistance, right, with the leg. Live with that resistance in your body. I think that's an important part of practice is to notice the resistance. And then see if you can get pretty centered in that and focus mentally, breathing deep. And relax the face, the skin of the face. And now as we prep to change sides, you might keep your belt on your head, on the back center, and keep the, maintain that awareness in the back of the right leg pretty peaked. And the volume is, it's really up right now in the leg. Can't you hear it? Okay, so as I move my sand off my left, I'm going to switch. So left foot up, right leg down. If you don't like that perspective of holding onto your belt, then switch it with your hands. And then the right leg, it's straight down, it's reaching. And this should really fuel up your legs, right? Not just the reversing the flow of gravity in most everything inside you, right? But really fundamentally, we see the legs doing that. We know that's occurring. So when I switch the sand to the other side now, and you don't have to use your sand at all. It's, it doesn't feel pleasant, don't use it. If it's it not necessarily a pleasant, but it's grounding, it's traction, but it's not for everybody. So as I push into my left foot above, I'm also reaching for my right foot below. Now my head can move back. And I have the choice to move my head back and to activate that left leg a little bit further at the back of the leg. You might try that direction. Belly moves, breath lifts the core. You know, as you guide yourself into yet another kind of labyrinth of focus into the pelvis, this final set is going to really kind of move through each of these patterns in the core of the bones. 
And we'll put it all together with the bow on top. So as I move my sand, we'll keep it nearby. I'll use it pretty soon. Okay. I'm going to slide the belt, and as it moves off my head, my head goes back, and then the right foot goes up. Push out. So get a feeling of your feet pushing out into the belt, and as the legs are motioning out, I want to let the knees take a bend and feel the knees so they actually sort of a little bit more out than in. They're not rolling out, but avoiding that toes in version. So you might get a feeling of your feet flexing. Naturally, it doesn't have, you don't have to activate it very much. It's happening just to hold your belt. So I'm gonna bend the knees and hold the belt piece that's closest to me. Happy baby pose, feel the resistance. It's really mild with the elbows. It's not necessarily uncomfortable. But now this kind of wakes up a little bit more of that pelvic awareness. So when I bring my feet together and then I kind of politely draw the knees into my chest. I'm going to lower down my, my seat, okay? So I'm going to bring the knees into the chest, and then I'm going to scoot my bolster forward. So my seat now is on the ground, at least at the back of my pelvis is there. And then you're going to add either a block or a ball between the knees. And I'll recommend that if you use um, the bolster under your feet, which isn't required. Some people get a little more out of bridge poses without the bolster. Some people get more out of it with the bolster. So you might try both since you're in your own home practice. It's easier to do that. So I lift and I lower my hips. And the momentum of the lowering is rather easy, right? I want to go low with my hips, so it's easy. So squeeze the ball or the block when you lift up. Okay, stay hips up for a few moments here. Feel your arms forward and palms open. Feel your shoulders back. Feel if you can push down into your feet and lift up your thighs. Now, do you push down again? No, you squeeze the ball or block. Relax the grip on the ball or block. See if you can relax that energy in the nerves of the hips. And then lower your spine down. Yes, the muscle behavior is kind of interesting. It just efforts a lot. So let's try to take all, too much effort out of it. So first things first, push down to your feet. Squeeze the ball or block. Push down to your feet and lift up the hips. Reach your arms overhead, palms towards the floor. Inhale. And then exhale, lower down. Lower down the spine, massage your vertebrae. Okay, either take a few more drop bridges or we'll shift into knees to chest, up to you. You can take more draw bridges or knees to chest or windshield wiper. Okay, so I'm gonna move the ball. And then I'm going to bring my knees side to side for windshield wiper, edging off the very edge of my hip bone. Okay, so our final kind of spring around the hips here is to move into a crossover pose. So let's give a few options because some of us don't want to move our props all over the place. So one option for this is right leg over left leg, knees to left. Add your sand on your right outer hip. Right, you could put the ball at the sacrum. And that's a different one. We haven't done this in a long time, right? It's a twisted root pose. Okay, and notice that one use the bolster over to the side yard. Just a kind of a normal routine. The right leg goes over the ball at the sacrum. And then the sandbag on the exterior right thigh, right? So you be the decider, and it might feel good to change it up and to have the twisted root pose. If your leg bands will cross through and your knees are happy, you're happy and you know it, you might work with that pose. Feel your arm open on the right. Feel the chest turning. 
and try to keep it so it's a rotation. Yeah, let the pieces of the body kind of feel like they're really starting to open up and let go. Empty out anything that seems to be lingering. Maybe it's your breath force, maybe it's your heart, something that's lingering with some tension. Just for your simple self. Let your eyes relax so the mind can rest. And when you get that feel of your thigh in motion, it's likely not your leg that feels a stretch as much as what is attached, like the attachment to your hip. So kind of hydrating those joints. So the shoulder joint might not be as evident here, but for some it could be tingly in the hand or through the arm. So if that's tingly, you're going to lower the arm a little bit. Maybe it to go a little lower. Now, depending on your twisted pattern with your back, right, the crossover, if you're in a crossover, you're going to start to come back to center. And you might do a little bit of a hip massage with your ball. So let's say you're in this hip crossover with or without the holster in front of you or the side of you, either one. You can move that ball so your feet are down or on the holster, do the side and then massage into that right glute. So I've got the ball, so it's right on the back of my, well, I would consider a butt on the back anyway, but I'm cruising it to the lateral rotator on the attachment right to my side flesh of my buttock, right? So try to use the ball so that you can actually um, really feel the situation shuffle through the leg, jostling the skin. Okay, prep for the second, the final hip stretch. So if I have my bolster in front, which is great, right? This feels good too. And my left foot, the left leg crosses over right, knees to right. Sand on the outer left thigh. You can use a, anything under this right leg that might work out. Maybe a ball, maybe a block. I like the ball on the sacrum. And then attach that sandbag to the outer leg. If you're going for a crossover, right? You're going to left leg over. Yeah, it feels it feels interesting. Both of them are a little different from each other. And this side, your knee might not touch down like the other side. It's different. You are different, probably side to side a little bit. Some side parts of it pieces more than others. So I could put anything on the bolster if I want. Okay. Outer left leg, stand it. Open out your left arm. Influence the tissues in the waist. This is your final um, reach through your body position. Get your eyes center. You're certainly welcome to let your right hand be on the leg, on the belly, be on the lookout. And then feeling if your brain can turn towards the left. Now study the arch in the spine where you feel that the energy moves into the back and then feel how the chest is exploring opening. Now these two areas could still be studied in your final relaxation. So you might kind of pick apart in your scanning right now where in your body you can feel an obvious area that can use some complete letting go. And that's what we'll go back to when we're with our bolster in front of our, our legs. 
Now we'll start to move out of this one. So if you have sand on exterior, off. If you've got the ball at the sacrum and you want to massage to that left glute, you can turn carefully like you're in a bridge pose, right? Your hips are up. The ball is on that left glute and we'll massage a little bit. This is just a very tiny piece of the class option, right? So some of you might pass on it. Windshield wiper, knees to chest pose. Lots of options. So if you're not doing that massage, you might be alternating knees to chest and massage to the lower back, okay? Or windshield wiper knees. Okay, so here, as we push into our feet, when you're ready to move that ball aside, we're gonna roll on the spine and come up. And we'll place our blocks under our bolster. So we'll take two blocks. If you prefer to go to legs up your wall, legs up your wall, you could do that. It might feel a little bit um, more cleansing for some people. Get that full flush all the way to the brain, but this is adequate as well. So we'll take the, the refreshment of the legs on this pose, either legs up your wall or legs up your props. Okay, so I'm gonna place my blanket so it's in a actual quarter fold under my spine. You can have your blanket under your head, across your mat, horizontal, or in this version. And when you do roll back, I want you to try to let your legs, first thing is that they are supported um, as high as they can go. So this pose is really about letting go um, at the core of each of your pieces in the body. So feeling where you have a sensation of Openness, if my legs are up and this whole area can flush, then my belly can be open. And if that feels pretty vulnerable to you, you might want to have a sandbag. You might want one on your shins. You might want one on your ribs. But with this position of resting my structure and the core of my bones, feel the resistance in the body and then gradually give yourself permission to let go. Eyes closing from top to bottom, spine centering. Let your arms wander to where they're finding some comfort. Feel that you have two arms to help open your chest or to help center your chest. So having them close to your sides could be quite helpful. Receive your breath, noticing when you fill up your body through the nostrils, how much space in front of your body that you notice fills up when you inhale, and then across the exhalation, relax, empty, your vessel. And slowly begin to fill it back up, one breath at a time. Feel yourself in a peaceful state, maybe you bring to mind, visualizing a place that you feel very comfortable in or an actual landscape that you like to observe. Let your mind be filled with that insight, that thought. So letting go of all the pieces that you hold together. Opening up for new kind of refreshed vision. So the toes doze, let the heels close. And you are grounded, supported.
So the arms connected by the sides. If you have any sand on your core, I would remove that so that that space is welcome to flow with the spine. Now to motion ourselves upwards, let's take a final moment, especially when we're reclining, even though we're all in our separate home spaces, mentally just observing the influence of practice just for yourself, but also observing that there's others sharing this practice. And it's, it's pretty interesting that we're spanning across really the country sharing this practice. So let that ray be felt from out back to in. And then depending on your situation with your props, if you have a sandbag on the shins, it would be different. If you're shinful, you might have to shift your sand. If you're shinless of sand, you can bring your feet to the edge of the props. And then just let your arms open. You might feel your knees in. And I like to be real careful with my back. I just let my body roll to the side and humbly roll into your body and let your head come up left. If you kind of rebound it up to say bye-bye, you know, take a simple moment sitting anywhere you'd like. Bolster, blanket, nothing. Sitting on your heels in your own pose. Feel your shoulders move back and align your spine up to your brain. And then hands merging at the heart and brain bowing into the heart space. In gratitude to each of you, namaste. Inhale slow. Exhale, bowing into your heart. Thank you. All right.